This is AQA Chemistry. It is the June 2018 trilogy paper, Chemistry Component, and this is question one, which is related to electrolysis. So we are looking at the electrolysis of copper chloride. We have the diagram there to help us, and we want to know what gas is being produced at the positive electrode. Now, the fact it's a gas narrows this down considerably, but let's take a look. If we've got copper chloride, and we know that electrolysis is going to break it down into its elements, we can then consider what the ions are within that solution. And we have copper ions and chloride ions. Now, of those two, chloride ions are going to be negative. They're minus one, and we know that because chlorine is in group seven of the periodic table. Now, it then makes sense that negative ions will be attracted to the positive electrode because opposite charges attract. So the correct answer is chlorine. We then go on to consider what's happening at the negative electrode, and we're told that we're making copper. So what does this tell us about the reactivity of copper? Well, you can use your knowledge of the reactivity series here as well, which hydrogen is often included in because of this sort of reaction. Copper is less reactive than hydrogen. Now, the easy way to remember this is to contrast it with the electrolysis of brine, which is sodium chloride in water. And in that we don't make the metal, we don't make sodium, instead we make hydrogen. If hydrogen is more reactive than the metal, then that metal will be produced. But if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen, then hydrogen will be produced at the negative electrode. We're going to move on to 1.3, and we want to know the mean mass of copper produced after three minutes. So you've got to work your way around the data on the table. And in particular, I'm looking at the fact that we've got one minute, two minutes, four minutes, five minutes, and three minutes is somewhere in the middle. What I can then do is start to look at the gaps. So I've got a 0.6 gap. So one minute, my mean is 0.6. After two it's 1.2, it's gone up by the same amount. Two minutes later, it's gone up by another 1.2. So that makes me think it's going up by 0.6 per minute. There's a slight anomaly with five, but all of the rest of them fit that pattern. So I'm gonna take it as 1.8, which is exactly halfway between the 1.2 and the 2.4. I'm now transferring the relevant data across. We want to know the mass X of copper produced in experiment two. So I've got my two, my experiment one and experiment three, a 3.02 and 3.01. My average of all three of them is 3.06. So I'm doing a mean calculation, but I'm doing it in a slightly different way because I know what the average is. And we end up with something that looks like this, 3.02 plus x plus 3.01, all divided by three gives you 3.06. Now, if I rearrange that to make x the subject, you can see that x is 9.18 take away 6.03, giving me a value of 3.15. And I can give myself a very quick check here because 3.01 and 3.02 are both below 3.06. I know my answer is going to be above 3.06 to bring the average up. On to 1.5. Copper chloride solution used in the investigation contained 300 grams per decimeter cubed of solid Copper chloride dissolved in one decimeter cubed of water. The student only used 50 cm cubed, so how much solid copper chloride was used in each experiment? Well, first of all, we need to consider what 50 centimeters cubed is in decimeters cubed, because we're working in grams per decimeter cubed in the data provided. And we do that by dividing 50 by 1,000, 0.05 dm cubed. Now, from there, if I know that one decimeter cubed contains 300 grams, I need to find out what 0.05 contains. So I do 0.05 multiplied by 300. And that takes me to my answer of 15. 
and I'm just going to show here where the three marks come from. We get one for the conversion of the volume, one for the working out, and one for the mass. If you get to the right mass, you would get all three marks there.